Hello all, my name is Krishnayak and welcome to my YouTube channel. So we'll be continuing the part 2 of the Pandas tutorial and in my previous video I've already discussed all these things where we were able to access the elements by using dot lock operation and dot i lock. After that we also saw some of the inbuilt functions like um, dot value counts dot unique right so we also use dot value counts and we try to find out how many unique values are present in a uh, column itself i mean how what is the count of the number of values uh, that are present in the columns and all now what we will do is that we'll try to read some data set uh, and we'll try to see what how we can basically read different different files suppose the file is in csv format suppose the file is in excel format how do we read those We'll try to have a deeper understanding about pandas read operations. Okay, so to begin with, what I have done is that I've taken one uh, Mercedes Benz.csv file, and this is available in Kaggle. Uh, so I've downloaded that file, and I've basically used this read underscore csv command inside pd. Right, so pandas uh, again, pandas has a lot of functions in short. So if you want to see, I'll just execute this once again for you. As soon as I execute this, okay, I go over here, right? And if I write pd dot, I just write r. There are a lot of functions uh, for reading different different data set like read underscore clipboard, read underscore csv, read underscore excel, read underscore feather, read underscore html, right? We'll be discussing about read not read underscore html also and read underscore pickle right read underscore json so these are some of the very very important uh, you know read functions uh, for reading various kind of data sources and we'll be using them extensively and um, you may also have a lot of questions rela relating like how do we uh, basically read data from mongodb from an sql uh, database right I'll be showing you that also for MongoDB you have a different library which is called as PyMongo and uh, you basically have to create a Mongo client for that and again there is a, a small tutorial that I'll be uploading for that also as we go ahead um, with respect to SQ, SQL, SQLite I'll also be uploading videos how you can basically read data set from there because uh, understand guys in MongoDB you'll be having non-structured semi-structured data right so uh, if you want to read that particular data and convert into a data frame, it will just not be very very simple because in that semi-structured data you may have multi-nested uh, you know JSON format or dictionary key value pairs. So at that time once you are reading that particular data you, you need to do a lot of formatting for that and then convert that into a data frame. I will show you an example for that later on but just we will try to understand what are the inbuilt functions in pandas. Okay, So here I have my read underscore csv file. And inside this read underscore csv, we have a lot of uh, parameters. We give file path or buffer. Then there is a default separator called as comma. Now csv basically means comma separated values. When you have comma separated values, that basically means you are using a separator called as comma. Now still, if you are not understanding, I'll just open a csv file in Notepad or Notepad plus plus, and I'll show you why this comma separated value is basically used. Okay. And there also there is also a parameter called as delimiter, header, index column, use columns. I'll I'll all discuss about this as I go ahead. But just as, let us understand that okay, I have already a comma separated values file called as Mercedes Benz.csv. I am reading this particular file. After reading this particular file, what I am doing is that uh, I'm just trying to see the head part. Again, um, this has many many columns and many many rows. I'm just uh, by using df dot head. I'm basically just seeing the top five records. Okay, so here is my top five records, and here you can see that I have various columns like x0, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7. Now the reason I have taken this because guys, I, we will be doing in the future about the data analysis or exploratory data analysis on Mercedes Benz.csv file also. And uh, if you see all these features, these all are categorical features. You can see over here, right? So I'll be showing you through feature engineering how do you handle this category of features through various ways. They are around five to six different ways. Uh, so the reason I've taken this particular CSV file. Now, before going into this particular CSV file, I want to introduce you to some of the inbuilt function like df.info. So by using df.info, you will be able to see some of the values like how many columns are there, what are the data types, how many integer values are there, how many object types are there, and many more things. There is also an inbuilt function which is called as df.describe. 
Now df dot describe actually helps you to provide much more values and it helps you to uh, in, in short it provides you details like what is the count what is the mean of that uh, columns suppose in the ID what is the mean so these all are column names and make sure that when you are using dot describe only the integer and floating columns will be taken into consideration your object column will not uh, be taken into consideration that basically means that if you see over here uh, I have uh, category features of x0, x1, x2, x3, x4, x5, x6, x7, x, uh, x8, okay, x7 is not there. So these all are category features. So when you are actually using df.describe, the category features will be skipped because you cannot find out the mean of a category feature. You cannot find out the standard deviation of a category feature. You cannot find out the minimum value of a category feature. And these all values that you see over here is like 25 percentile. 50 percentile 75 percentile these are percentiles okay these are not percentage instead these are percentiles if you have not seen i have already explained you about percentiles and it is present in my statistics playlist uh what i'll do is that i'll provide the uh playlist description uh, i mean playlist url in the description box you can go and understand what exactly percentiles are okay and uh and if you if you have written cat exams if you have written gate exams in engineering right you will be in probably knowing what are percentiles but if you don't know please go through my statistics playlist so two important function describe and dot info which are most commonly used again now let us go and understand what exactly how does this csv file looks like okay and uh, before going into this complicated csv file let me just show you a very simple csv file so suppose i have this csv file it is called as test1.csv okay and this is present in the same uh, location i had actually opened from here okay so uh, i think uh, you'll be and in the previous video only i had created this uh, test1.csv as we said that a csv file is basically a comma separated value so here you have column 1 comma column 2 comma column 3 co uh, comma column 4 now when you go to the next line this is if you just see in a string characters it will be slash n okay slash n basically says that you're going to the next line so you have row 1 comma 0 comma 1 and these all are values these all are your row indexes okay these all are your column indexes okay and similarly you have row 2 row 3 row 4 row 5 and these all are all your values you can see over here okay so this is the data set that you have this is your column names that you have okay and uh, I hope it is not getting displayed properly so here it is okay so this is this is basically your, all your column names this is basically all your uh, row row indexes row 2 row 3 row 4 and row 1 this is your data 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 now if I want to read this particular data what I can do is that uh, and again guys remember Suppose uh, this comma separated values, uh, now currently this is comma, suppose it has something else now and although it is in a CSV file, suppose uh, instead of this comma, I'll say that, okay, it, it is having semicolon. Okay. I'll just say it is having semicolon. Let me just replace everything, every comma with semicolon. Now let's see if we read the data set, how do we change the parameter? Can we just use the read underscore CSV, right? That we need to check. I'm going to just uh, replace this just give me a second for this because this is very very important to understand if you know to play the play with the read underscore csv function i think that will be much more better for you to handle different different kind of scenarios okay so let me just open and replace this all values so i have changed it okay i have saved it now what i'll do is that i'll just create a cell over here insert cell above and i'll say that okay test underscore df and i'll say pd dot read underscore csv and here i will say test one dot csv now when i will be executing this guys you know that csv by default looks at comma separated values right the separator is this one so what i will do is that i will create a separator parameter because now my separator parameter is nothing but semicolon I go and see my test underscore df dot head of five records now you can see that it has got properly you know I have this row one row two row three row four column one column two column three column four 
and there is some issues i know that there is some issues it is not able to read the row 5 because i think i have not changed the row 5 let's see so the row 5 in the row 5 we have uh, you know uh, we have replaced the comma with semicolon okay and now if i save it and if i just try to execute it what will happen is that you can see over here I am just trying to read this test1.csv file and if I go and see the head part here you can see that I have row 1, row 2, row 3, row 4, column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. Later on I will be showing you how you can basically set this unnamed row that you see over here as your index, you know, your row index. So there is again a lot of inbuilt functions to do that. But the main thing is that I told you that if I change the separator value also it will be working. And it need not only be comma, if you have different separators, that also will work. Okay. So, this was about read underscore CSV again. Now, if I want to apply some inbuilt function, suppose I have this x0, right? I showed you that if I want to find out how many number of categories are present in this particular column, I can basically use um, value underscore counts, okay? And you can see that for this category, it is present 360 times. For this category, it is present 349 times. For this category, it is present around 324 times. And all the remaining categories are present for this many number of times. Okay. And after this, you can also write inbuilt uh, functions, which I actually showed you. Suppose you write df of y is greater than 100. Okay. And on top of that, if you write again df, and this particular uh, condition is inside the data frame that you are basically applying for. And this will do what it will do. It will go and see wherever the Y value is greater than 100, it will only display those records. Okay. Okay. Don't worry about this Mercedes uh, Benz.csv file right now, guys. This is just to show you an example I have actually taken up. But we'll do more extensively in exploratory data analysis. Okay. So let me just go ahead and let me just show you some more things in this. Um, just uh, give me some time. Uh, first of all, we'll just discuss about the CSV now. Now, in, inside the CSV, we have already seen that our data usually is in this format. So I have column 1, column 2, column 3. Slash n basically indicates the next line. Then x, comma y, comma 1, slash n again indicates the next line. A, B, C, comma 2, slash n, C, comma D, comma 3. And like this, suppose your strings are basically present, okay? And again, guys, I can consider this as my CSV file. I can just copy and paste this whole thing in my test.csv file if I want, okay? And uh, then I can basically read it, okay? So this is one type of data, one type of example that I have. Suppose I go and see the type of this data, it is basically string, okay? So let me just execute this three lines of code. Now what I'll do is that, I will convert this whole data by using the string IO. Okay. String IO actually helps you to, if you, if you go and see the uh, function of string IO, right? If you make an build function like this, string IO, if you press shift tab, there you can see that text IO implementation using an in memory buffer. So over here, you can see that whatever value that I am giving. Inside this string IO, it is going to create a text memory buffer. And then I'm saying that read this particular using a dot CSV, read underscore CSV, sorry. So this will actually understand that, okay, these are my columns names. These are my indexes. By default, what are indexes will be getting created? And these all are my values. As soon as I read this here, you can basically see that after reading it, I'm actually getting this as my uh, or a data frame. This is basically my data frame. Here you can see I am having column 1, column 2 and column 3. And this is my index is 0, 1, 2, right? So this is pretty much very, very important uh, to understand. Why I am not taking a CSV file? I can take a CSV file. What I can do is that I can copy this whole thing inside a text file and save it as uh, test1.csv like that, okay? But you need to understand that what exactly is present inside test1.csv. It will be some comma separated values. And uh, it, this, since I have only three columns over here, I can only see three values over here. So that basically indicates that these are the values of inside this particular column. Okay. So uh, after this, I also want to specify you some of the parameters inside read underscore CSV. The one parameter is something called as uh, use underscore columns. Use columns, sorry, it is use columns. Now use columns basically says that from 
all the given columns inside your CSV file. If you just want some specific columns in the, uh, from that particular CSV file, you can basically use this US, use columns. So what I'm doing over here is saying is that I'm just putting use columns is equal to okay lambda function x dot x upper in column one power column three. Now I've just made this a little bit complicated. What you can do is that you can just remove this okay and you can basically write I want column one I want column one comma I want column three. Suppose I just want two column values. So at that time I can basically write like this. Now if I go and see my df, right? If I go and see my df, you will be able to see that I'm only retrieving the column one and the column three from the data set that I have actually created. From the column, from the whole column one, column two, column three, I'm basically just picking up column one and column three. So that is where your use columns comes into you. Okay. You can extensively use this thing. Then I will also use an another inbuilt function if I want to convert this whole data frame back into a CSV file. I can basically use df.2 underscore CSV and just give the file name that you want to save it in. And as soon as you give this in the same folder location, your file gets saved. Okay. So if you want to try it out, just try it by executing. Now, if I want to specify the columns data type. Okay, I want to like uh, when I am building the CSV file by default, I want to provide my own custom data type, not custom, it will be own inbuilt data type like integer, like float, okay, like strings or like an object. If I want to specify, how do I do that? So this is my data now. Again, you can see that I have four columns now, A, B, C, D. And inside that I have values like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Okay, so if I do this print data. Okay, so here you can see this is on my data. Now, inside this read underscore CSV, what I am doing is that I am basically writing string IO of data, which is similar what I have done earlier. Then apart from that, I am saying that please make the data type as object. Okay, that basically means all the columns now will be an object. Okay, will be definitely an object. Now, object basically means in this data frame, it will be strings. Okay, because it will... This all values will be strings. This all values will be strings. If I make it as integer, then it will be considered as integer. If I make it as floating, it will be considered as floating. Now, let me just execute it and it, let me just show you. Now, here you see that you have all your values that is shown, but don't get confused just by the numbers, guys. These all numbers will be basically strings, okay? So if you want to verify it, I'm writing D of A. So, D of, of A, if I do, what I'll be getting? I'll basically be getting 159 right and now if i want to pick up the index of one what will happen it will basically give me a string value okay over here you can see that if i am picking df of it these all are objects the data type is objects okay now similarly i can also use different objects like integer uh let's see what is the error integer has nan values in column three perfect so here you can see that i have only three values over here right so I have to create another, suppose I create it as 12. I create my next element as 12. Okay. And uh, here it is. I'll execute it. And let me execute this. Okay. Now if I go and see my df now. Yeah. Now here you can see that all these values are integers. Again guys, I'm not editing the error part. I want you to all to see what all errors we will face. And if I execute this, you can see now the data type is in 32. Similarly, let me convert this int float and if I execute it now you can see that it is converted into floating point now if I write df of a you can see that all the values has been converted to float pretty much simple pretty much easy okay now what I will do is that I can also specify all these values like column a I can specify of different data type Column B, I can specify as different data type. Column C, I can specify as different data type and similarly with D. So in order to do that, what I will do is that I will write PF is equal to PD dot read underscore CSV of data. And here I will be having D type, that is my data type. And here I'll be providing a dictionary of key value pairs. I'll say that, okay, for the B column, make it as int. For the C column, make it as NT dot float. For the A column, make it as int64. That is what I am actually trying to do. Okay. 
So as soon as I execute. Now you can also directly write float over here. I've done by using np.float. Now np.float is basically my numpy np, but I'll just make it as float over here to make it more simple for you all. And once I execute it, if I go and see, you can see over here, my C column has become an, uh, sorry, C column has become an float. B column has basically an integer and A column is basically int 64. And again, this, uh, it may be an int 64, int 32. It depends on the version of your computer also, guys. Don't get confused with that. And let me just pick up this DF of A of 1. Here you will be seeing that I will be getting this Y value and this is an integer. If you want to go and see the type and uh, execute it, it is basically int 64. Because I had made A as int 64. Uh, <clears throat> apart from that, you can also use df.d types to check all the I mean, to check all the data types of the all the columns over here. Let us go and understand some more parameters inside read underscore csv. So suppose this is my data. Okay, I have an index column. Okay, I have abc column, and then in the index I have values like four and eight, and in abc I have apple bat five point seven orange cow 10 so when i do read underscore csv and uh, just let me uh, remove this for now okay and let me just execute it here you can see that having this uh, you know the index column you i did not see anywhere right so you you can see again this i'll just execute this okay i have something like index 4 comma 8 abc i have apple bat 5.7 orange cow 10.0 now i wanted this one to be my index of the rows, right? By default, the index is over here is 0, 1. So I want to make this as my index, okay? And this scenario you'll find in many data sets. So for that, you have a parameter which is called as index underscore column is equal to 0. So why I'm giving it as 0? I'm saying that makes the make the first column as my index, okay? So this is my first column, right? Zeroth column is my first column, okay? So this zeroth value i can also make this column so for that i will be giving my first index for this so if i give uh, one index over here okay so here you can see that apple has become if i give zero index that basically means my index column has begin basically become my row index again i can provide any value so suppose if i provide two that basically means it will become for the b column right if i provide three for the C column, it will make it as index. But by default, I want over here the zeroth column because I want this index column to be the row index. So that is where how this index underscore column will be very, very handy. Okay. So just, just try with other, other uh, data set because you'll get this kind of scenarios where you just have comma separated. And once you are reading, it will not directly take it as an index. So you have to specify this index underscore column value. Now let us go ahead and try to see some more examples. Now, here you can see that I am having three variables, right? This, this I'm considering as three columns. And here I'm having values like four comma apple comma bat, four comma orange comma cow, okay? Now, when I do read underscore CSV string IO of data, okay? Now you can see over here, my four eight, okay? My four eight is basically taken as the index and my ABC, ABC, okay? So A is basically taken as apple, B is basically taken as, uh, you know, bat, C is not taken any value. So C is having nan and nan. And similarly over here for uh, the next record that I have for this eighth index, in that it is orange, cow and man. Why it is taking in this particular manner is that if you go and press shift tab and if you just go and see the default data type, let us go and see the default data type. I think somewhere will be data type as nan. When it is data type as none, by default, what it does is that it just follows the same order. Like suppose I'm having this four over here. Okay. Uh, this, this will basically, and if it is a number specifically, it will be considered as an index. Okay. So here I'm, uh, I'm having it as a row index and then it will just follow the order. So here I have apple. So it will just consider it for a, I have bat over here. It will consider for B. Okay. For C, it will be none. Now, in order to handle this particular issue, but it should not happen in this way, right? Because it knows that for the A column, I'm giving the value as 4 and 8. I'm not giving this as my row indexes. That you need to understand. So for that, you have another feature which is called as index underscore column. Initially, I was giving it as 0. Here, you just give it as false. Okay. So when you give it as false, what it does is that 
whatever order you have basically specified in that order only it will go and take so execute over here you can see that i'm having a b c 0 1 and for a whatever value had i assigned 4 comma 8 it is going to take uh, for b for c whatever value it will be assigned it will going to take now you can see the difference between these two again guys this code is basically given in the github link you can basically practice it out you can basically check and what I would suggest to you is that what whenever I'm teaching, just practice along with those things, right? Practice along with this only. You write the code over here in front of me, pause the video for some time, and then continue it, right? Then you'll be able to understand many things, okay? Now, I can also combine uh, use column and index column. Now, if I combine use column and index column, what will happen? Just see. So, I'm using this particular data. It is the same data as on the above, okay? I am saying that use column B on a B comma C, okay, and index column is equal to false. So it has already skipped the A column, so I don't have four and eight, and you'll be able to see the data which looks something like this: zero one B C apple bat orange column. Pretty much simple, okay. Pretty pretty much simple. And after this, one more property that I would like to specify, and again there are a lot of uh, pro, you know parameters inside read underscore CSV, and uh, the most common one I'm actually teaching you here, okay. If I go and create something like this with uh, so this is my comma separated values and in this I have escape characters you, you can see that this is an escape characters that is separating after the comma separated right so I have you, you can see a comma b slash n that is new line then you have hello comma double escape characters you have Bob you have nice to see you and five now suppose I have this complicated sentence which is a comma separated and if I want to basically convert this into data frame, what I will do is that I will just execute this statement. I'll use this inbuilt parameter which is called as escape character and I am going to use this particular parameter. So whatever the escape character you want to escape or you want to just skip it out, you can basically use it directly. So as soon as I execute it and execute, you can see that this whole text, low bob nice to see you this should be one value right so it is present inside a now and inside b it will be having five okay this is basically used for the text characters whenever you have a text data set at that time you can basically use this thing, okay and uh, apart from this guys uh, sometime it so so happens that your data set may also have slash t as a separator slash t basically means tab as a separator okay tab space basically means slash t so uh, suppose in a file you have slash t or if you have pressed uh, tab button so there will be one delimiter one space tab limiter in short which you can basically also read by using read underscore csv so for that you have read underscore csv function you just provide the url suppose i have providing the url where the slash t tab separator values are present and you just have to use separator is equal to slash t so when you do that okay and when you execute it here you can see my df dot head okay df dot head and here is all your items that you basically want so the main thing is that if you download this particular file from the internet and if you open in notepad plus plus it will be having slash t as the separator okay you can basically use this particular stuff okay and uh, it is pretty much simple and i think i've shown you many functions many inbuilt parameters inside read underscore csv i'd suggest you practice more practice different different things inside this and again uh, in my next video i'll be coming up with the read underscore json how do we read the json files <clears throat> how do we read the json values and that will give you an idea about read underscore json also and similarly we'll be also having different different uh, functionality uh, pre present inside pandas and we'll be discussing about it and guys remember this all things will be helping you in exploratory data analysis a lot okay so this was all about this particular video and uh, I'll see you all in the next video. And again, this is just the part two. I still have two more parts to discuss about pandas because we need to understand pandas and NumPy very properly. So this is the part two. So I'll see you all in the next video. Please do subscribe to the channel if you have not already subscribed. Thank you one and all.